pirate. Like, we'll play pirate no, Mark. No. Keep oh going, Smarty. Keep going. I can't my yeah, hands. we'll play pirates. Now walk the flag. Get out on that side. Say goodbye to your little friends. Ask you in addition to like the script dif- the the differences between the script and the ultimate cut was you had John Matuzak on that. Yes. All right. So you may have heard uh Jaw screenwriter Carl Godlieb, who directed Caveman with John Matuzak, mm-hmm. that story about how it's one of the all-time great Matuzak stories, of which there are many, and I want one from Goonies out of you. Um, uh, but the middle of the night, Carl Godlieb as the director of Caveman. Gets a phone call from the hotel staff saying your actor is throwing furniture into the pool. And it's Matuzak. He's throwing furniture off the balcony into the pool. And then he goes into the pool itself and he's throwing everything he can find. The barbecue, the hotel barbecue, the sage lounge. It's all going in, right? Carl Godlieb as the director, the only one with any rank, tells him, hey, knock it off, John. Come on back. And so John does all right. He kind of mopes back and. On their way back to the elevator to their rooms, John uh, Matuzak turns to him and goes, Carl, I didn't really want to do it, but everyone expects me to do it. (laughs) 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 Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, That does sound like him. Yeah. Well, you, you know, I mean, he was very, he was a pretty jovial guy. I mean, you worked with him and also our friend, I would say our mutual friend who's helped us out on a charitable front, uh, Randall, who was his stunt double. Yes. Um, uh, uh, God rest his soul. Um, uh, yeah. but, uh, you know, when I, I actually flew up when I flew up to Oregon to the set, um, I flew on the same flight as John and, and, and Randy. And, um, uh, I guess according to Randy, I don't re- recall this, uh, John was really rude to me and, but I, I, I don't have any recollection of that, but anyway, we got to Astoria and, or we got to Portland actually and deplaned and John came up and had his head hung down and he, he apologized mm. and uh, Randy had made him do it. You know, he respected Randy a lot yeah. and uh, Randy kind of kept him focused and kept him on the straight and narrow uh, during that time. I, I know he had, you know, um, it, it wasn't easy for him and being in that makeup too. I mean, you know, um, I remember, uh, being up in Bodega Bay shooting the reshooting the ending and we all went to dinner and, um, we were sitting at the table and, and, uh, Sean and Corey excused themselves and went to the bathroom and, uh, they're in there at the urinals and, and Matuzak comes in, he's had too much to drink and he proceeds to relieve himself in the sink and Sean and Corey just didn't know what to do. Um, and, but they, they made sure to tell everybody when, uh, when, uh, we got out of the restaurant, but it was, you know, he just, yeah. he was, he was a free spirit, wasn't he? Time to hazmat the sink. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but too, Zach, was uh, larger than life. I mean, a friend of mine played with him on the Raiders too. I don't know if I told you, he told this hilarious story about how they checked into the Super Bowl for, um, curfew. The game before the game and like Mm -hmm. the coach is like all right everyone in your room i want you guys in your rooms by 10 o'clock no craziness don't go out all night next day for the super bowl the team bus is leaving and matuzak's not on it (laughs) and they can't find him in his room and there's no there's no site or there he's nowhere to be found the bus is pulling out of the hotel driveway 
And Matuzak comes running up and he looks like he just crossed the border from Tijuana, man. I mean, he's disheveled. It looks like he climbed under a couple of barbed wire entanglements and he comes running up to the beat and they let him up. They, they let him onto the bus and he sits down exhausted. And he's like, wow. Wow. And the coach is like, I told you no one breaks curfew. I'm very angry that you did this. How dare you do this? It's a game day. This is important. You blew this. You're off running around having a good time, and we've got the game of our lives ahead of us. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I had to go out there, man. I had to. I had to. I had to go out there to make sure none of you were out there. (laughs) (laughs) He was smart, too. Yeah. just How do you stay mad at that guy? Yeah, exactly. exactly. How do you stay mad at him? Yeah, and I gotta say that that all during that time, like I said, he was in makeup for hours, you know, yeah. getting into the sloth um, uh, head and 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 uh, the the eye and everything else. And I know he was uncomfortable um, that ho- during the day, but he was always great with the kids. He was always great with the with the cast um, and the crew. And um, I really respected him for that. He he could have been complaining and and gritching and moaning, and he didn't. He he really you know met the challenge how did he become the the actor for that was that from like a inspirational decision from the get-go or did did Fenton was, come up with that i think that was donner actually yeah you know donner was a football fan and and uh i, I yes think he was the one who who uh, actually thought of tuzak for that and um it was inspired you know and, and as you know he's one of the most beloved characters yeah um and and is in every meme and everything i mean he's it's amazing did he did he not get a baby ruth endorsement after that movie no i mean they didn't think the movie was going to do anything you know see that's the thing now you'd have a brand manager right who would be right on that in those days it's like uh, whatever would your road to redemption is paved with tombstones no quarter kill all masters Go to no quarter, killallmasters.com. Rated R.